All right. How many of y'all ready for the word? How many of y'all? Because I'm excited about this, man. really am. I'm excited. Because listen, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. You want to build your faith up? How many of y'all need more faith beside the pastor up here? If your hand's not up, come preach. Because here's the deal. We're all, I'm striving to get better. I need more faith. Amen. And I refuse to let Peter walk on water and Rafferty sit in a boat. And so I'm after it. Amen. I'm after it. Amen. Go ahead and turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I love you. Thank you for being here today. I hope you wore your steel toe boots. <laughs> Amen. How many of y'all glad to be here? Everybody, everybody still good? So, all right. So here's what I want to do. I want to preach on the subject today. Lessons from the life of Judas. Lessons from the life of Judas. Now listen, there's some scripture I'm going to be talking about today that I wrestle with. I wrestle with this stuff. Because the Bible says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. So I really believe we need a Jesus generation and not a Judas generation. And those are two different J's right there. There's always a Jezebel. There's always a Judas. But there's always a Jesus. Y'all just missed y'all's praise right there. That's all right. We'll, we'll get somewhere. We need a Jesus generation. We just don't need a youth group that knows about Jesus. We need a Holy Ghost Spirit-filled youth group that's going to change the school systems, change this generation, change this world. We need that. And we've got that, amen? We've got that. But listen, Judas lost some valuable things in his life. He did. He lost some valuable things. And if you lean in, and if you listen, I promise I'm going to try to wrap this up and I don't know. But anyway, I'm, I'm going to try to wrap this up. Judas lost the personal presence of Jesus. Now, I, I started thinking about this. What if you lost the personal presence of Jesus in your life? How many of you know you can go to church, you can be here today, but that don't mean you have a personal relationship, that you personally feel Jesus Christ. There's one thing in my life I would not take anything for, and that's called conviction. I praise God that when I mess up, or when I say something I shouldn't say, or I do something I should not do, that I don't have to go to a high priest I got the Holy Ghost living in me. He tells me very quickly, hey, listen, don't talk like that. Don't act like that. How many of y'all are thankful that you got a personal, a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? Listen, don't take that for granted. Don't take that for granted. Judas, he also lost fellowship with Jesus and the body of Christ. He quit coming to church. Uh-oh. I'm going to stop right there. Y'all can chew and wrestle on that one later on. He also lost his ministry. Judas lost his ministry. Y'all with me? Say, I'm with you. Listen, something else he lost. He lost his rewards in heaven. He lost his rewards in heaven. His relationship with Jesus, his relationship with the church. He lost his ministry. He lost his rewards. And so today what I want to do, I think we can learn a lot of lessons besides those about Judas. Judas. So the first thing I want to, I want to teach you today, that Judas, that he lost, but Judas refused to change. Listen to me very, 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 very carefully. Judas refused to change. Church, I want you to think about this just for a moment. Let me teach, let me lay down this foundation before I preach. Judas walked with Jesus for three years. Yeah. Judas seen the leper cleanse. He sure did. He seen the leper go to the Jordan and dip seven times and come up healed. He seen that. He seen blinded eyes come open. He's seen the lame walk. He's seen Lazarus raised from the dead. Listen to this, it's crazy. He's seen all of this, but he never changed. He never changed. Y'all listen to me, because we got a bad theology going around saying these words, well, did Judas make it to heaven? Judas was a disciple. Judas was an apostle. Judas did not make it to heaven. Listen to me, lean in. I know this is deep and I know this messes up religious people because we honestly God think that we can hang around Jesus, that we can see signs, wonders, and miracles, see salvations and see baptisms, 
put a check mark beside our name and we're going to heaven. That is a bad lie that church people and pastors has told y'all. Uh, let, let, me, let me read you some. Can I give you a Bible? Because it really don't matter what Rafferty says, but watch this. John chapter 6, verse 70. Oh, I can't wait to preach this, Jimmy. Mm, let her go. Hallelujah. Like a horse in a chute this morning, I hear, the, I hear the bell sounding. John 6, 70, the Bible says. Everybody say, the Bible says. Now, this is the Bible. This is what the Bible says. Not what I say. Not what Reverend Doctor says. This is what the Word of God says. Jesus answered them. Did I not choose you, the 12, and one of you is a devil? Oh. See, here's the sad story about Judas. Y'all ready? You come on. Here it is. He started out a devil. <laughs> he walked with Jesus for three years, and he ended up a devil. He started out a devil. He walked with Jesus for three years. He sees signs, wonders, and miracles. He went to church. Even though he quit church, he went to church. But he ended up a devil. He did not ever change. He refused to change. He never allowed, listen to this. He never allowed what he seen, what he heard, what he witnessed. He never allowed that to change him. See, so this is what this tells me today. You can be here right now and lost as the day is long. You can, you can raise your hands and be lost. You can see signs, wonders, and miracles and be lost. This is what this tells me. And I know you don't hear preaching like this no more. Everybody thinks this is a Pentecostal thing. No, this is a Bible thing. This tells me Jesus chose Judas. He walked with him for three years. He's seen everything that you have probably seen. But there was something that did not happen in Judas' life. He never changed. How many of y'all know you can fake to be a sheep for a little season? A wolf can fake it for an hour and a half. Oh, I'm preaching. All right. It's all right. So it's not good enough. Watch. Listen. I'm trying to really help y'all because I don't want nobody here to die going to hell. Nobody dies and goes to hell. Listen, if this ain't real, let's go home. If this Jesus stuff is not real, we're wasting our time. But I believe, I believe every word from Genesis to Revelation, I don't understand it, but I believe it. I literally believe there was a man named Peter that walked on water. I literally believe there was a man named Lazarus that died in the tomb for four days and he come out smelling like a rose. I believe this. I just need somebody here today. Do you believe the Word of God? Every bit of it. Tongues. Do you believe it? Prophecy. Do you believe it? I just need to know. I just need to know. Woo! I just need to know. You say, why do you need to know? Because I don't want you dying to go to hell. So listen, here's what it's saying. If there is no change in your life, <laughs> there is no salvation in your life. I'm going back old school on y'all. No transformation, no change, there's no salvation. Could it be the reason why your friends talk like Judas, act like Judas, walk like Judas, is because they are Judas. You know, you know what this also is, tells me? Are y'all okay? Everybody still breathing? You can become so churchy, so religious, that you can hang around Jesus and see the signs, the wonders, the miracles, the baptisms, and never allow God to change you. I want to ask y'all a question. Are you changed? Are you changed? Not on Sunday. I'm talking about when hell in the hallway on Monday. I'm talking about when you get a bad doctor's report. I'm talking about when things don't work out the way that you think they're going to work out. How do you act and how do you react? There's got to be a change. And here's what, here, let me go on. Listen, if you refuse to allow God to change you, that means, listen to me, that means you've got the heart of Judas. You can be here today. You can be here today. And I ask this all the time. Are, are, are you born again? Here's what they always say. You ready? I've been baptized. No, you got wet. If there is no change in your life. Y'all listen, listen, please. I, I'm telling you, I feel the Holy Ghost on this, on this message. If there is no change in your life, you've got the heart of Judas. 
It's very serious. I believe Dr. Billy Graham. Mark 4, he says he believes it's hmm, 75% of church members will be in hell. Church membership, y'all with me? Somebody say amen. I know this is old school, but this is Elkhorn. Y'all supposed to be used to preaching like this. Some of y'all are looking at me sitting there going, oh God, am I saved? You better know. We don't have a hope so. Y'all ask me this, say, Pastor? Come on, y'all ain't, y'all ain't participating. Y'all say, Pastor? Are you saved? Well, I'm glad y'all asked today. <laughs> I'll be glad to tell you I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I don't question what God is doing in me. I know if I die today preaching this word, when you look at me in a casket, watch this. Surprise, I'm not there. Ouch. That kid said, ouch. Oh, number two. Oh, y'all with me. Somebody say, I'm with you. Oh, I love, I love, I love, I love this. Judas wanted to give Jesus something, but not everything. Oh, everybody say, that's going to preach. Yeah, let me tell you what God gave me. It's so good. When Judas, listen to this, seen Mary. Everybody remember Mary in the Bible? She opened the box, the alabaster box, Jimmy, is what some translations say of perfume or oil, whatever you want to call it. She poured it, y'all watch, poured it on Jesus' feet. Y'all remember that story, right? She fell to the ground and she started worshiping Jesus. Not only did she fall to the ground and break the box and pour the oil on his feet, she took her hair. We missed this. We we missed this whole story. Because I hear sermon after sermon after sermon, break the box, break the box of tradition. Watch this. I gotta stick with this. Listen, when she wiped his feet with her hair, I want y'all to watch what Judas said. Now, Judas was a disciple. Judas was a church member. Judas was a member of Jerusalem First Baptist. I'm just wait a minute. It really wasn't that. Watch Mark chapter 14, verse 4. Judas said, why was this fragrant of oil wasted? Why was this fragrance of oil wasted? See, Judas wasn't mad at Mary because she gave something. Watch. He just became very upset because she gave everything. Listen to me. You want to upset the devil? How many of y'all want to upset hell today? How many of y'all want to make hell tremble today? Yeah, I ain't talking about just being in church saying, yeah, Brian, that's right. No, I'm talking about you really want to upset hell today. Give God everything. Give God everything. Give God your oil. Somebody say oil, oh, amen, come on. Yeah, don't give God just your oil. You gotta break some things in your life and then pour it out on God. You, you gotta fall on your knees and you gotta worship God. You gotta surrender to God. And don't give God just a little worship today. Let's give God everything we got today. Let's leave tired today in Jesus' name, amen? Well, see, if you, if you don't surrender Listen, Satan don't mind you being in the boat with the other disciples. Satan does not mind you being here today. Satan don't even mind if you put a tithe in in the giving box. I'm telling you this. What messes the enemy up is when you do what Mary did. Y'all with me? Say, I'm with you. Come on. Y'all work with me. I know the rain's making some of y'all sleep. And I I pray God shake you up right now. And I can see what you're doing. You got to do what Mary did. Y'all, you listen to this. Mary went against the odds, and she went somewhere where she was not welcome. Listen to me. Women was not supposed to be in that house. And she said, there's something in that house named Jesus, and I'm going to do whatever it takes. I'm not going to let a man, I'm not going to let a denomination, I'm not going to let nobody stop me today from getting into the presence of God And if you brought your worship like that here today, it don't matter if they raise their hands or if they sit on their hands. It don't matter what they do. I come to give God praise in this house today and nobody's gonna stop me. And that also messed up some Judases too. Judas people are religious people. You start worshiping the way that they don't worship, watch how Judas acts. Watch this, Not, not only did she do that, she broke, she broke her livelihood. She broke a year's worth of wages. How many of y'all have ever worshiped like, yeah, God, I'm giving you $50,000. Oh, 
Oh, never mind. There went, whew, went with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> she laid. Listen, this is real, Jenna. Either this is real or we're all dying and going to hell. I believe it's real. She laid her life. She laid her livelihood. And not only that, y'all listen to this, this is crazy. She said, God, I'm in. I surrender. I give you everything that I've got. I give you my all. I give you my worship. I give you my livelihood. I give you everything. And oh, by the way, here, take my hair. That's why Matthew chapter 10, if you read your Bible correctly, God says, I know I've numbered every piece of hair on your head. You know why? Everybody say why. Because he owns it. He owns it. All she was doing was giving back to him what he blessed her with. How many of y'all know that's what a tithe is? You're just giving back to God what he's already blessed you with. We have complicated church so much. We have made church about us. It's nothing about us. It's all about him. He just allows us to walk in here today, busted and disgusted, needing a word from God to fill us up and put us back on the mission field. That's what he's done. I love Mary because this is what she said. Mary said, God, I'm giving you everything. I'm sold out. I'm yours. And I'm just not giving you something. I'm giving you everything. Everything. Y'all know what to help your marriages? Diana can testify to this. Give your husbands to God. Amen. See, some of you women are trying to change your husband. Y'all can't handle it. Let's go to number three. This one's a good one. Number three, Judas called worship waste. I'm going to say it again. Judas called worship waste. Mary called it worship. Judas called it waste. I'm going to say it again. Mary called what she was doing worship. But Judas called it waste. I told you in Mark 14, 4. And I love, I love what Jesus, Jesus said to Judas. Y'all got to get this. Jesus said these words. Y'all ready? And I can hear him saying today, leave her alone. Leave her alone. Because, here's what he said in the Bible, Mark 14. What she is doing is beautiful. What she is doing is beautiful. It is beautiful. But Judas called it waste. See, worship is a beautiful thing to God but Judas says, no, you're wasting your time. How can a man who is called to be a disciple, who's called to be a disciple, who's called to be an apostle, say that worship is waste? Church family, listen to me. All, and all of those watching my website today, I want you to listen. Here's how you know if you're falling away from God. Y'all ready? It's so simple. Y'all ready? Say, I'm ready. Come on. Come on. I feel like there's a sleeping spirit on y'all today. Yeah. Listen to me. Here's how you know, right now, in here, right now, I'm talking to you. How you know you're falling away from God and you've got the heart of Judas on you right now. If you're sitting here today and you say, I don't like that song. I, I, I don't have to worship. I, I don't have to raise my hands. I don't want to raise my hands. I don't have to give God a shout. Matter of fact, what they're doing is silly. It's crazy. It's stupid. Oh, here, listen, I, I've heard that here. And I'm exposing that, that Judas today. If you call worship waste, that's Judas. Oh, boy, you could hear the Baptist mice now. Yeah, if you call, wor if you call what we're doing up here today waste, you need to read your Bible. Watch this. God just spoke this to me. Because worship is not a Pentecostal thing. Worship is not a charismatic thing. Worship is a Bible thing. I feel the Holy Ghost. Hey! Psalms 150 said, clap your hands. Praise the Lord and clap your hands. He said, praise the Lord with a shout. Praise the Lord with a dance. Whatever you do, praise ye the Lord. Come on, somebody. Let's just do it right now. Let's just take five seconds. It don't matter what you think. Watch this. Just give God big old praise in here. Come on. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. See, you're not clapping for me. 
You're clapping for him. Oh, come on, five. Come on, we're going to do it right. Four. Come on, give God three. Lord, we love you too. <laughs> Hallelujah. One, now let's raise the roof in this place. Hallelujah. Woo. Woo. Mm. Hallelujah. See, we get all mixed up. When you stand to your feet and you open your mouth and you clap your hands, you're not praising here individually as far as a person. When, the, when, you, when the praise band's up here and they sing a song that connects with your spirit, all you're doing is testifying. God, I can connect to that. How great is our God? Well, when y'all started singing that, that connected to my spirit. And here's what God spoke to me, and I want to give it to you guys really quick. Here it is. You're not wasting worship if you're pouring it on Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, yeah, you Yeah, she broke the alabaster box. The men, the disciples were saying, what is she doing? Why is she falling on her knees? Why? Is she worshiping him like that? Oh, my God, she's taking her hair. That literally happened, by the way. See, listen to me. Y'all with me? Say, I'm with you. I'm, I'm, I'm what she called worship, Judas called waste. Listen, there is nothing wasteful about what we're doing here today. There is purpose behind my shout. Yeah, listen, y'all don't know what I went through this week. I don't know what y'all went through this week. And when somebody walks in this church and they got tears coming down their face, that is a purpose behind the tear. And I just say, let's just have a heavenly choir. Let's have some dress rehearsal. Because God created us to worship. But if you call worship waste, that's the heart of Judas. I'm going somewhere. Number four is the last one I want to give you. Y'all getting it? Number four. Very, very important y'all get this. I, th I thought a lot about this because a lot of people think they got the power or the authority to tell God what he's going to do. Listen to me. I know we're from Kentucky. Chew tobacco, chew tobacco, spit. I know. We've not had really persecution here in America. But I want y'all to lean in. The way this world is going, you better know which side of the tracks is your own. Because persecution is coming to America. It's coming to the churches. Y'all probably visiting me in jail pretty quick. So y'all ready for this one? This is the last one. We're going to land the plane. We're out of here. It's 11 o'clock. Here we go. Number four. If you don't finish your assignment, somebody else will. I worked hard on this. Y'all just sitting there looking at me. If you, listen to me. If you don't finish your assignment... Somebody else will. The Bible says, I didn't say this, the Bible says that Judas took 30 pieces of silver. Y'all know what I'm talking about. If you've been to church longer than a year, you know that Judas sold Jesus out for money. 30 pieces of silver is what Judas exchanged. Listen, I've, Judas exchanged his soul. He exchanged his life for 30 pieces of silver. Listen to me, so good. Money. Judas, Judas exchanged his salvation for money. And the Bible said Judas took 30 pieces of silver. And listen, I'm just going to shoot y'all straight. I think, listen, we've been playing vacation Bible school long enough. It's time that we have some good Bible study in here today. The Bible says he took 30 pieces of silver. Watch, the Bible says he threw it on the floor. Listen, he threw it on the floor and he went out and he hung himself. He hung himself. He took his own life. Now listen, it's very important y'all get this. I wrote this in my personal notes. The very thing Judas was willing to exchange his relationship and sell his soul for, he eventually lost. Be very careful. And you can say, Brian, this is a prophetic warning, but y'all listen to me. We got more problems than COVID-19 
in South Central. COVID-19 won't send you to hell. But when you sell your soul, uh, when you sell your soul to the devil, when you sell your soul to your lifestyle, I'm going to do it no matter what they say, no matter where they're at. Listen to me. I, I, I know. Listen, I'll probably get hell over this one. Well, I am so ready because you can't. All you're doing is giving your opinion. I'm backing it up with the Bible. Judas sold his soul for money. And some of you here today, all you do is work, 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 work. And I'm telling you, you better be very careful. I believe it's important to work. If you've got the health to work, you need to work. But it never takes the place of praise in your life. It never takes the place of Jesus Christ in your life. It never. It never takes that place. <clears throat> Be very careful what you sell your soul to. Some of you are selling. I wrote this in my notes. You're sold out to work, money, sex, drugs, relationships. But be very careful because all what I just said is something you will eventually lose. But there is a person, a man inside of me. I'm not perfect. I don't own a phone booth, but I know who I gave my soul to. <laughs> and I know the man that lives in me will never let go of me. I know the man that lives inside of me, he loves me. And I'm telling you, listen to me very carefully. I want you to imagine, as I do, as praise team, you guys come. Fighting hard up here today. Fighting hard up here today. You know why, man? Listen to me. See, some of y'all think, well, it's just loud in here. No. We are in a spiritual battle. The devil does not want Rafferty to deliver this word because here's what happens. If some of you sell your soul to Jesus, hell's in trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you just cross over and say, you know what, I don't understand it all. See, some of y'all are afraid to worship because what people are going to think about y'all. Well, what does Jesus think about you? What does Jesus think about his children that raises their hands and says, you know what? It don't matter. I'm getting to Jesus today. And listen, so good, and this is so powerful. How many of you know in Revelation chapter 21, there are 12 foundations in heaven? Now, I want you to listen. This, I'm going to teach this for a moment, but you've got to hang with me. We're getting ready to land a plane. There's 12 foundations. There was 12 disciples. One out of the 12's name was Judas. Judas sold Jesus out for money, work. He didn't make it to heaven. He hung himself. And I've seen this in my spirit. I, I was told, telling Dana Friday, we went on a date night. Dana said, what well, are you preaching about Sunday? Well, about 45 minutes later, she's like, I got it. Great date night. That's sexy, y'all. Y'all can't handle it. I'm, I'm not, <laughs> yeah. oh, oh. Revelation 21 verse 14 says, There are 12 foundations in heaven with the 12 apostles' names on them. But there's one foundation in heaven that used to have a man's name. His name was Judas. Now, I don't know if... i just seen this in my heart, my spirit. 12 foundations... Revelation 21, 14 says, every foundation has an apostle's name on it. One of those foundations had the name Judas. Because Judas did not finish his assignment, because, this hurts. I don't believe you can lose your salvation because I really believe if you, if you firmly are born again and saved, you won't want to sell out to nothing but Jesus. But Judas was a lost man. He started out the devil. He walked with Jesus for three years. He refused to change. And because he refused to ch not change, I seen in my spirit, Abigail, 
that Jesus walked over to one of the foundations that had the name Judas and he marked it out. He marked it out. He marked it out. Because there was a man named Matthias in Acts chapter 1 that took Judas' place. And Judas' name was on the foundation and Allison, he, his name, he didn't make it. And Jesus marked it out. And he put Matthias' name on it. I know this is deep. So what I'm saying is this. Y'all with me, Sam? I'm with you. Matthias was the one that finished Judas' assignment. And this is a priceless lesson for me, for me, that I can learn from Judas. Lessons that we can learn from the life of Judas. If you don't finish your assignment here on earth that the Lord gave you, did y'all hear me? If you don't finish your assignment that the Lord gave you here on earth, somebody else will. Listen, Elkhorn, I'm not here because you voted me in. I don't care what you say. I am here on assignment. I was appointed to be your pastor. But here's what I've noticed. And this is tough. If I don't finish my assignment here, give y'all three months, six months, maybe a year, there'll be somebody else standing up here. Did y'all hear me? But I stopped by today to tell you, finish your assignment. Finish your assignment. Y'all got me? Somebody say amen. Because if you don't, watch. Revelation chapter 3, verse 11. Revelation chapter 3, verse 11. Here's what Jesus says. So good. Tell you to check this out. You blow the shofar one day. Gabriel's going to blow the trumpet of the shofar. And watch what God says. Listen, this is what Jesus says. Not me. This is what Jesus said. And we need to hear this. Behold, I'm coming quickly. Behold, I'm coming quickly. Could be today. Watch what he says. Hold fast. Hold fast. Hold fast. Hold fast. In other words, in the Greek, it means be faithful. Be faithful. Remain steadfast. Watch, he says this. Keep fighting the good fight. Notice he didn't say it was a bad fight. He said, keep fighting the good fight. Hold fast. Watch what he says. To what you have. Here's the crazy thing, Jimmy. Watch this. That no one may take your crown. <laughs> God says, listen now, corn, lean in. What we're doing here today matters. He says, hold fast, Jimmy. I know it don't look good, son. I know you got a lot of things going on, but be faithful. Remain steadfast. Hold on. Hold on, I'm coming quickly. He said, you hold on that no one, that no one may take your crown. Y'all got me, somebody say amen. That no one may take, what does that mean? That God says, I've got many crowns. How many of you know there's a soul winner's crown? I got one of those and I can't wait to lay it at my daddy's feet. How many of you know whether you believe this or not, read your Bible, it's so good. Why do I got to be faithful? Because there's there's a crown called faithfulness. It is important to go to church. And watch this. I love Facebook. And I'm going to say this. I'll probably get blasted. But Facebook is not the church. There's nothing like when God's people come together, touching and agreeing and laying hands upon the sick and praising God in hell. There's nothing like it. Somebody give God a big old amen in here today. Facebook does not replace the church. Woo! I feel the Holy Ghost. So uh, he says, remain steadfast. Hold on to what you got. 
there is a crown that's called a faithful crown. One day when y'all get to, we get to heaven, I hope and pray that every one of y'all lay the faithful crown at Jesus' feet. You know what that means? God says, I've noticed your faithfulness at church. Church meant something to you. I know it don't the world, but it does me. So let me go on. Y'all ready? I'm on history of this. In other words, who am I speaking to today? Watch this. You started out strong. You started out on fire. In love with the Lord. But somewhere along your path, somewhere along your path, you lost your way. And now church is not important as it used to be. Conviction is nowhere in your path. You're more critical than you've ever been in your life. Instead of giving God praise, you're saying worship is waste. Be careful. Y'all listen to me. Be very careful. Because if you do that, if you do that, I promise you that's the heart of Judas. What Elkhorn does is worship the greatest name above all other names, the name of Jesus Christ. And when we get to heaven, there's going to be a heavenly choir. And I don't know what they're going to sing. The Bible says, Mark, there's going to be a new song. Well, I don't like new stuff. Well, you ain't going to like heaven. And you may not be there. You may, you listen to me. I'm going to ask you a question. Do you remember a time in your life? Listen, do you remember a time in your life that you said, Lord, save me. Save me. Listen, you, I'm, I'm not one of these type of preachers, Willie. Really. That's going to get up here and say that on December the 11th, 1977, I said that prayer. I did. <laughs> but you don't have to remember the date or the time. You just got to remember the event. Do you, listen, do you remember a time that you said, Lord, forgive me of my sins. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe that God raised him from the dead. And I confess him as the Lord of my life. Change me. How many of y'all can testify that? I said that, Pastor. Come on, I said, I've said that prayer. There's hands not up. Listen, if you won't praise Him here, you won't praise Him in the halls of your school. If you won't, as free as it is in here right now, if you won't give Him praise in a church, you think you're going to go out on uh, in New York City and give Him praise where they're cussing you out and wanting to kill you? Second question, do y'all remember a change? Not church attendance. Change. Now, I'm not the man I used to be. Hallelujah. I don't like hurting people. I don't like cussing out people. I don't like sin in my life. If there's not a change, I promise you, you're a Judas. You're a Judas. So here we go. If you feel like giving up, if you feel like quitting, if you don't know where you're at, listen, the lessons we can learn from Judas is number one, Judas refused to change. Watch, y'all ready? Are you, are you willing to change your life today, right now, for Jesus Christ? Judas wanted to give Jesus something, watch. Lord, I'll give you my Sundays. I ain't good, I'm, I'm done. I know we don't say that out loud, but our heart speaks, it echoes it. You give God something, but you don't give God everything. Judas called worship waste. Check your heart. Come on, let's have a, let's, let's do a spiritual inventory. How many of y'all have a hard time worshiping? And some of the songs just don't really fit your category. And so instead of worshiping, you're saying, why are they pouring the oil out on that? That's the heart of Judas. That's the heart of Judas. And Judas did not finish his assignment. Y'all look at me. Finish your assignment. Everybody stand to your feet. I'm done. Come on, let's give God praise in here today. Amen. Hallelujah. 
I feel in my spirit that some of you, the Bible says if you're not careful, you'll be like a dog going back to its vomit. If you're not careful, watch. I know what I'm talking about. I know. I know what I'm talking about. But little by little, y'all know I'm telling the truth. Little by little, one Sunday equals two Sundays. Two Sundays equals four Sundays. Next thing you know, you're at home. You're on Facebook. You got a cup of coffee in your hand. You're in your pajamas. And you're not even. I had a woman call me at church. And she said these words, Jennifer. She said, I don't know if I'm coming back. And I told her this. I said, honey, evidently we got two different spirits in us. Because I got to be at church. I didn't say I got to be at Elkhorn. But I've got to be in the presence of God. I've got to, I've got to get a touch today. And so I'm going to ask you, with a crowd of this size, magnitude, have you changed? Have you called wor- Do you call worship waste? Are you giving God a little bit? Or are you giving God everything? Are you doing what God has called you to do? Have you answered your assignment? Because I'm telling you, I felt this, Perry. I can see Jesus walking over to some of y'all's pillars in heaven. Some of those foundations that says, you know what? I called Willie Bland, the pastor, to preach that word of God. But if he don't answer his call, somebody else will do it. That's why it don't matter to me. Brian, you're divorced. To who? Brian, you got sin in your life, don't we all? So here's what I'm asking. Y'all ready? Have you answered your assignment? Are you giving God everything? Do you call worship waste? And have you changed? So Father God, in Jesus Christ's name, I've done what you called me to do. Bless these people. May souls be saved. May lives be changed today. God, may we sell out to you. May we sell out to you. In Jesus Christ's name, and all God's people see. This altar's open. You come. Give God everything today. Amen. Let's leave, let's leave it at the altar today. Let's give God everything today. And let's leave blessed in Jesus Christ's name. Praise Him. It's up to y'all now. Take us into the presence of God. In Jesus Christ's name.